Hey guys, what is up? And welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. In the last episode, we did a whole bunch of stuff. Oh my god, that was insane. We found three people with Cyclops, and we broke two of them. We broke Old Bags, and we broke Lada's. And we found out that there was this big scandal with uh, Adrian Andrews and um, Juan, uh, Juan Corda. And um, what Miss Oldbag saw, she saw... Um, Frank... I literally forgot what she saw. <laughs> what she said she saw. It's fine. It's fine. It's okay. She's gonna be the witness. She's gonna be the witness tomorrow. It's okay. But yeah, um, now we're just continuing on. Let's go. Detective Gumshoe said they had an investigation briefing. Yeah. Oh, he's back. Hey, so you came, pal. Why the blunt greeting? Um, because there's nothing to be friendly or happy about. What do you mean by that? Well, things look perfect this time around. The evidence and testimony are airtight. But, but, we can't just roll over and die. We have to stay positive. Come on, gumshoe. So, what do you mean the evidence is airtight? I can't give you all the details, pal, but there's two big pieces. T two And both of them are in this photo. The first is the button that's missing from the victim's chest. Hmm, that's the button that you found during your body search of Mr. On Guard. Yep, I found it in the folds of the Nickel Samurai special pants. Um, uh, and the second one is? And the knife in his chest, pal. The fingerprints on the knife in his chest, to be exact. Fingerprints? Um, whose are they? You didn't even have to ask, little missy. It's obvious. They're mad on guards. Tomorrow's trial. Talk about being stuck between a lock and a hard place. A lock and a hard place? I said a run. Whatever. So what about this airtight testimony? It's that old security lady, Miss Oldbag. I thought so. What do you mean you thought so? Did she tell you something, pal? Um, well... And I even told her not to open that mouth of hers and blab to anyone. Her blab knob is stuck on ten and there's no turning it down, trust me. Yeah, well, Miss Oldbag saw it all, pal. She saw Mr. On Guard come out of the victim's room around the estimated time of death. N no way! <sighs> Anything to present? If I've got leaking info to you here in the precinct, my neck's gonna be in a ringer, pal. Y your neck? No! Uh, I mean, my neck is a joke. But yeah, ask me about things that have to do with the case only, alright, pal? But it kinda does, a little bit. We're pretty interested in this bit of gossip ourselves. The scandal with Mr. Corda? But why? Well, two years ago, a woman committed suicide. Suicide? Her name was Celeste Impax. And she was Juan Corda's manager. The victim's manager? But that's not all, pal. Miss Impax was Adrian Andrews' manager. She taught, ev she taught Miss Andrews everything she knew about the business from square one. Her mentor. I said manager, it's her mentor. A woman who is both Mr. Corda's manager and Miss Andrew's mentor. Cause her suicide has something to do with this case? Do you want to know more about her, pal? Hell yeah. She was the victim's manager and also Miss Adrian Andrew's mentor. It's been two years since her suicide and now those two are linked together by another death. Or maybe it's just a coincidence, but- Wah! I'm getting sick of dealing with one foolish idiot after another. M Miss Von Car- Miss Von Karma! You can't seem to stop allying yourself with the en with the enemy, can you? I don't need a traitor in my midst. Y you don't- you don't mean- I do, Scruffy. You have 30 minutes to get out of here. You are no longer needed. Goodbye. Th that's- w Wait, please wait, sir! If I don't get this month's pay, I'll start- Quiet! If it weren't for traitors like you... What? Who? That voice... <gasps> Edgeworth! It's been a long time, right? Th this person... This is Mr. Edgeworth? What am I going to do with you? Still blaming others when things go wrong? You haven't changed a bit, Francisca. Y you... How dare you show your face to me without a shred of shame upon it! 
You've soiled the Von Carmenade and dragged her through the mud. Run away with your tail between your legs like the ill-bred dog you are. Are you talking about the Von Karma family creed? To be perfect in every way? Then let's hear it, Francisca. How are things going? I hear you are having a rough time maintaining perfection in this country. Y you You seem to be getting crushed under the weight of it all. That's why I came back. Keep your assumptions to yourself. I... I haven't given in yet. I won't lose. This case is mine. I'll never hand it over to you. Never. Mr. Phoenix Wright? I will see you tomorrow, in court. It will be a clinical lesson on the meaning of total victory. Hmm. <laughs> Still the same wild man she always was. Edgeworth. I thought you, the prosecutor Miles Edgeworth, had gone and died. Mr. Nick! I... I never wanted to see you again. I think that's enough of a warm welcome for someone you haven't seen in a year. Are you gonna run tomorrow's trial? You heard her, right? That wild mare hasn't given in yet, it seems. So, no, I don't think I'll be making an appearance. Your hatred for me is quite unhealthy, not to mention one-sided. But I will say one thing. You can't win on your own at the trial tomorrow. <clears throat> what is that supposed to mean? I have something definitive that you lack. And that's the definition of teamwork. It's the power to find the truth. The truth? In order to understand this case, you have to understand a certain truth. Well, if you ever feel the need for my assistance, it is available to you. I'm not in charge of this case, so I can be a bit more generous with information. Just what is going on inside its head? A lot of things may have happened, however, Manfred von Karma was still my mentor, and a perfect win record is a proof of von Karma. One year ago, you could not establish guilt in a few cases. Are those losses the reason you suddenly disappeared from the prosecutor's office? Did you leave because you had lost your perfect win record? To think your motivation for prosecuting trials was so selfish. It'd have been better for everyone if you never came back from the dead, Edgeworth. I see. Then let me ask you something. Why do you stand in the courtroom? What's your reason? Well, if it was Francisca, she would almost definitely say... I will defeat you this time, the instant she saw me, but the courtroom is not a personal battlefield for prosecutors and lawyers. I stand in the courtroom to defend my client, to save their lives. To save your client, you say? Those who think only of their ego-driven goals, those who kinds of prosecutors are reprehensible to me, even if you're a prodigy, or someone like you, Edgeworth. It looks like there is still a lot you have yet to learn. A lot I have yet to learn? Me? Hmm. <laughs> well, that's enough for now. The time when you will see is coming soon enough. <clears> hmm. <throat> <clears throat> this woman is another key to this case. D do you really think so? She was Adrian Andrew's mentor over a long time ago, but suddenly she was called away by a production and became Juan Corda's manager. And then a few months later, Celeste Impacts died. B but her death was a suicide, right? Yes. But there was still one riddle left unsolved. A riddle? A suicide note. It went missing. No one could find it. A suicide note that just vanished, huh? Miss Impax's death was most certainly a suicide. Of that, there is no mistake. However, we could not find her suicide note. That's when the police began to suspect that someone had hidden it. The suicide note? But how do you know Miss Impax had even written such a note? There was no solid evidence, however. We did find traces of ink on her right index finger, which makes the likelihood of a suicide note very high. But who would hide such a thing? The police think it was Mr. Juan Corda himself. The, the victim? <clears throat> he was the one who found her body, which makes him the only person who had a chance to hide her suicide note. Mr. Corda hid his own manager's suicide note? But why? As long as her note is missing, any speculations beyond this is meaningless. For now, I think you should look this over. This is the suicide report. Part one, anyway. Part one? Part one? 
I don't like to look through reports. I like suicide reports even less. Worst of all are the reports that have multiple parts, like this one. That has two. Two parts? What you just handed me is the first part of the report. Here is the second part. The second part of the report is about an attempted suicide. The attempter's name? It's Adrian Andrews! M miss Andrews? Um, what did she do? She... she tried to kill herself. She doesn't seem like the kind of person to try and kill herself. You think she's a strong career woman? That is just her image. Adrian Andrews. She has a certain secret she's always trying to hide. A secret? Her codependency. That's the key word. Codependency. The word most unsuited is describing that woman. So, how are Adrian Andrews and codependency related? Adrian Andrews' attempted suicide was a few days after the death of Celeste Impax. And? And why did Adrian Andrews thinking about committing suicide? Quite possibly because she had lost her will to live. Lost her will? But why would she- Her pillar of strength, her mentor Celeste Impax, was gone forever. That's why. W why would that- Is this what they call following someone to the grave? After her attempted suicide, Adrian Andrews started attending, attending counseling sessions. <clears throat> she is a person who looks for someone she can trust unconditionally. And once she finds that someone, she blindly follows them. Without someone to guide her, she feels un uneasy and can't carry herself through life. And that's... that's her codependency? When Celeste Impact suddenly committed suicide, the world before her turned pitch dark. That's according to Adrian Andrews herself. Then... then that means her super confident attitude. It's all a facade. She's only copying her mentor's behavior to hold herself together. How terrible. Attempted suicide report added to the court record. Appearances can be deceiving. It's such a cliché saying, but it's cliché because it's true. Miss Andrews. To think that behind that unwavering brave front, she's been hiding this weakness and fear. <sighs> Maybe we have enough. March 21st, Gatewater Hotel on Guard's Hotel Room. Oh, Miss Andrews is here! But it looks like she's talking with someone. That's... Francisca Von Karma! Miss Von Karma? What are you doing here? Um, well, you see, I'm his lawyer, so... You've got some nerve following me around. Following you? Th that's you, Miss Von Karma! You're the one doing the following! Pearls. You're always following after that detective with the little beard! Me? Following after Scruffy? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I'll show you something interesting, little girl. W what is that? An electromagnetic receiver. I planted a tracking device on that detective. And with this, I know that fool's every move. So that noise we heard was this receiver. I feel really sorry for poor Detective Gumshoe now. Now then, let's stop wasting time. Adrian Andrews! Y yes Think hard about what we just discussed. Understood? Uh, all right. What were those two talking about? Miss Andrews, she seems a little dazed, doesn't she? Should we do it? Why was Juan Corda murdered? If you ask me, I think you know the reason why he was killed. Hmm... Why are you hiding things? Don't you realize you're putting Mr. On Guard's life in danger by your actions? Why do you ask questions for which I have no answer? The truth is, I was not that close to Mr. Corda. You were not that close? That's right. 
I've never been good at being intimate with another person. You were not good with being intimate with another person? Somehow I highly doubt that. <clears throat> you and Mr. Corda had an intimate relationship, did you not? A silly third-rate tablet article. If you even had half your, w half your wits about you, you wouldn't believe such rubbish. Well, it seems quite a few people bought into the story. Hmm, <laughs> as to be expected in a world filled with cooks and liars. Cooks and liars. Note to self, stay on her good side. In any case, I despise interpersonal relationships like that. I see, however. What if there was a need for you to get close to someone? Me? Need to get close to Mr. Corda? As if there was ever such a need. Didn't you get close to Mr. Corda for this person's sake? Celeste Impacts, your mentor. Why do you know about Celeste? Miss Impacts. She committed suicide, didn't she? But it looks like no one knows why. Right before her death, she was Juan Corda's manager. So I believe you got close to Mr. Corda so you can find out more about her suicide. Y you have a great imagination. You may have a future yet as a slimy muckraker for a putrid third-rate tabloid. Miss Andrews? There was no mystery surrounding her death. None. It would be pointless for me to force myself into a relationship for nothing. Is that really true? Was there really no mystery at all? I don't believe you were completely at ease with the way her suicide was resolved. This said something about a suicide note, right? Hold on. No, was it the, the first one then? Yes. Miss Impact's suicide note was never found, was it? It looks like the police were under suspicion that someone had hidden it. Like maybe the person who discovered her body, Mr. Corda. Juan? And Miss Andrews, I believe you thought the same thing. That is why you became intimate with Mr. Corda. Uh, I've sat by quietly and listened to your insulting ramblings long enough. It's true that Celeste was my mentor, however, allow me to say this again. It had nothing to do with me. I didn't even know that her suicide note was never found. I'm a person who doesn't care about what goes on in the life of others. That's the impression you like to give, however. I don't think that's who you really are. What? I have evidence that says otherwise. This is proof that Celeste impacts with someone very special to you. <sighs> Miss Andrews, you... you went through it too, didn't you? Went through what? A suicide. <laughs> Miss Andrews, you look and act like a very strong woman who has it all together. You don't ask for anyone's help and you live by yourself. Y yes, I've been very independent ever since I can remember. However, that is all just a lie, a facade. You've always searched out people on whom you can depend on. Th that's... You were dependent on Miss Impacts, weren't you? Which is why, when she passed away, you lost everything you had. S stop when Celeste impacts, when Celeste passed away so suddenly like that, I died a death of my own, but... No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stop thinking about what had become of her note. You must have heard about the police report. The one that said the police suspected Mr. Corda of hiding Miss Impact's note. You heard about it, and thought to recover it from him by getting close, am I right? If that's the case, then everything changes. W what do you mean? What topic did we start this conversation on again? It was, why was the victim killed? Exactly. Somehow, Miss Andrews, it seems that you have become the one most likely to want Mr. Corda dead. M me Miss Impacts was everything to you. And then she died. And you would do anything to find out why she was killed. Even commit murder. Murder? <clears throat> it's true. I am a woman who can only live in insecurity. I'm physically small and I don't really have a lot of self-confidence. I pushed against all that, though. I tried to live strongly. I never wanted anyone to find out the truth. Miss Andrews! This one thing. It's the one thing I wanted to take with me to the grave. It was my secret. Mine and mine alone. I... I'm sorry. You probably think I'm a worthless human being right about now, don't you? Please, Miss Andrews. 
All I want to know is the truth. After Celeste passed away, I heard that someone had hidden her suicide note. And that someone was Juan Corrida. Celeste. Without her... Without her, I became scared. Everything. Everyone seemed like they were out to get me. So you got close to Mr. Corrida to recover her suicide note, correct? Looks like that tabloid reported the truth after all. Ironic, isn't it? Well, like they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. And if they purposely add fuel to the fire, they would keep the celebrity world burning. But, as for the suicide note, I didn't and wouldn't kill anyone for it. It just doesn't suit me, that's all. Well, that's enough for now. I still have work to do, so... I understand. Oh, and I have one small favor to ask. My attempted suicide. I'd like for you to keep it a secret. Miss Andrews? If, if people found out about my weakness, I, I would sooner choose to die than live. Uh, all right, I understand. We'll keep it a secret. Miss Andrews, I guess she's the always thinking type. She never says anything carelessly, it seems. Thank you very much. Mr. Nick, can I ask you something? What is it? Miss Andrews has been playing with that card in her hand since a little while back. That card? Yeah, I guess she has. Miss Andrews, what is that card you're holding? Uh-huh. Uh, oh, this? I don't quite know. I just- it just suddenly appeared in my handbag. <clears throat> what is it? It looks like... a seashell? That's what it looks like, doesn't it? I honestly don't remember owning this card. I wonder where I picked it up from. Her not remembering something clearly? Sounds like it would be a rare occurrence. Well, I must be off. I leave Mr. On Guard in your capable hands. <clears throat> March 21st, Gatewater Hotel, Hallway. Well, I think we've got it about all we can. Well, what about Miss Digmaya? Is she alright? Oh, Pearls. She looks so worn out by all this. She hasn't slept at all and she's been walking all over the place with me today. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? Let's go back to the office for a little while. You're really tired, right? Oh no! I'm okay, really. I'm fine, I really am. You don't look fine to me. Come on, Pearls, let's go back. <clears throat> March 21st, Wright & Co. Law Offices. So, what now? Well, we did find one thing out for sure. Miss Andrews has a motive. You mean Miss Impact's suicide note? That's right. She was also the one to discover the victim's body. Clever. Oh no. Oh no. Ah! Mr. Nick, the transceiver! Hello? This is the law office of Wright & Co. Mr. Attorney, you're not answering a phone. M maya Where's Maya? As I promised, I have not come within a few feet of her this whole time. Yeah. Which is why I suppose she is absolutely famished. W what? So I suggest you win a quick acquittal, my friend. At any cost. Wouldn't you agree? Wait, Maya, let me hear her! Very well. Ask my... Maya, is that you? Sis! Ask my sis! Maya! Maya! Damn it, he cut me off! Miss Maya said, ask my sis, didn't she? Sis? What does she mean by that? Come on, Phoenix. Ah, oh, you're a hopeless one. Um, s sorry. Ag Mia! I have a message from Maya, so come, ask me anything you want about her. Thank you, Mia. How's Maya? She's safe, for now. That kidnapper is one to keep his word, it seems. I'm glad to hear she's safe. But Mia, how did you know? As soon as she was locked up, Maya called for me. I read the note she left. Then I gathered as much info about her surroundings as I could. I didn't know you could use spear channeling like this. Pretty smart of her. The kidnapper! What's he like? I don't know. Apparently Maya went to answer a phone call at the hotel and was drugged there. And? She didn't see the face of her attacker. Ugh! Maya's locked up in a very dark place right now. I'll tell you everything I heard when I was with her. When you were with her? Date, time, location unknown. Uh, 
I'm starving. So am I, actually. I could really go for some apple pie. I mean, at a time like this, sweets are the only way to go. I have to stay positive. He promised he wasn't gonna kill me. I'm not gonna die. Sis, I wonder if you're with Nick right now. Oh, there's a card on the floor. Huh? Someone dropped a card here. It kind of looks like a business card, but there's no name on it. Hmm. It's a picture of a seashell, I think. What a strange card. Drat, it's locked. Hmm, but this door's lock seems easy enough to open. On TV, the hero always uses a plastic card or a stiff piece of cardboard. Then, click, they magically open the door. I wonder if there's a card like that around here I could use. Ah, that's it! This shell card! If I use this, maybe I can get the door to open. This might be my key out of here. I had a feeling this card might be useful. I'm such a genius. All right, now if you'll excuse me, Mr. Kidnapper. I did it! Okay, now I'm getting the heck out of here. I shouldn't keep Nick waiting or worried. Wait, so is she out? Is she out? Do we not have to... Do we not have to worry? Is she out? Is she coming back? Oh my god. All right. Well... Uh, I guess that's it for this episode. I'm sorry, I was just stretching. Roll the end card. Objection! You haven't hit like and subscribe yet! Hold it! You forgot to ring the bell to get notified whenever I upload! Take that! Click here to watch more of my videos! Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye!